Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode sweet 16. Yes it is. Oh, how nice. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this week we'll be talking about the uh, starting roster for the Sharks as well as the power play. Uh, we'll have a little sanity check mm -hmm. and we'll go over some fan etiquette for any new fans out there who haven't been to any games in the Sharks arena. And we'll also be revisiting our uh, hat giveaway, so we'll give you some of the details uh, as the show goes on. So we start the show. Ready? Okay. Well, kind of let's start show. Totally not my idea. <laughs> anyway, uh, so before we jump in, there's a couple of things we wanted to talk about. Um, the thing I want to talk about was that we had hit 800 subscribers on YouTube, which to me is just insane, right? Uh, we, we started this <laughs> a couple what, weeks like, ago. We were at 200, and we're like, "Wow, this is great!" Yeah, <laughs> it's been like two weeks, maybe. Yeah, the after Eric Carlson, Randy Hahn, and then Fan Fest, yeah. the, the live at the Fan Fest, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, after all that, you know, we were looking at all of a sudden having 800 subscribers instead mm -hmm. of 200, which is just again bonkers. So, uh, really big thank you to you guys um, for you know sharing it with your friends, mm -hmm. for supporting us. And um, we really just wanted to kind of get together and do something right. fun, and it's turned into, you know, a, a, a voice, a podium, it's almost. Still and fun. Yeah. yeah well, it's, it's, I have to work with them every week. <laughs> but <laughs> no, but it, it's it's a great time, and um, we we do appreciate you know you guys uh, jumping in and really making it a community for yep. us. So um, uh, that's what I want to say. A big thank you. Yep. The other thing is you can catch uh, Sports Meets Beer, a podcast that Paul and I were on last mm -hmm. week. Uh, aired last Friday, and it's episode 76. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to our website. We have a new website. I'm going to put the link down here. Yep. It's uh, thefinfactor.com. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's new, so give them a chance. Right. <laughs> so the, the podcast Sports Meets Beer is our buddies Ben and uh, Brad. Brad. <laughs> and Ben is works in the beer industry, so he does the beer. Yeah. Brad works in the meat industry. He, works, he owns restaurants, so he right. knows the meats. And they both... I uh, love sports, oh, so they talk about sports Brad and meat know the meats. <laughs> yeah, wow. Uh, if you get the opportunity to, I don't know, cater or something through Can and Can Smoke, I believe the mm -hmm. two, right? Um, you get the opportunity to go to the restaurant or cater, uh, y you're not going to be uh, sad well, about they what are the product up north. is. Oh, my. They're up north, uh, yeah. North Bay, uh, as restaurants are. Mm -hmm. One's in Hillsburg, one's in uh, Windsor. And... Um, he also owns a pub now. Worth the drive. Yeah. It's, it's like, also in Windsor. It's like two and a half hours out. But two, it's two yeah, hours. It's yeah. it's oh my no, goodness. For any listeners that are in the North Bay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Know, if yeah. you're up near Santa Rosa, give them a look. Past yeah. Santa Rosa, yeah. yeah. Check them out. They're awesome. Free plug for Ken. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. All right. So uh, let's talk about Sharks starting, starting roster. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, you want to start? Well, off? I mean, <laughs> I think we know kind of what the top uh, six is going to look like. The depth is kind of what's been in question, right? Um, most specifically, filling in that third line center position, Chris Turney. We've talked about this in the last couple episodes, so I'm not going to beat it like a dead horse. But um, Auntie Sumella really looking like he's solidified himself as the third line center for that that line. Mm -hmm. um, that's his role on the team. I was surprised a little bit to hear that in today's loss to the Vegas Golden Knights, the last preseason game, they lost five to two. Uh, I was surprised to hear that he had no PK time whatsoever. He was known for his defensive play in the Finnish Elite League, even though he led the league from the third line in points, uh, which is nuts. Um, and I just thought he's he's a lock, right? I think we kind of all know that already. Um, the fourth line center was kind of up in the air. Yeah. Rourke Chartier, Dylan Gambrell, they were in the mix, and all of a sudden, here comes Barclay Goodrow. And yeah. wow, um, it's, he, they had him in the lineup today. It looks like he might be the guy that goes uh, in opening night. Uh, on the fourth line center position and I mean hard work for him and it's paying off I mean we could see him being rotated around and it mm -hmm. could be based on the matchup as well so maybe if they're going to go play a bigger team like Anaheim or LA they might switch him out or right. if they're playing like a speedier team like Edmonton maybe they'll put someone else in so um, I think that'll be a rotating door mm -hmm. also injuries you know that'll happen right. so yeah. Um, yeah, it's great great for Goudreau and we all know Goudreau we know what mm -hmm. he does so um Good for him. And in tonight's game, uh, he drew two penalties, yeah. which is great for a fourth line guy Absolutely. drawing two penalties. Um, Sharks had a lot of power plays tonight, so we got to look at that. Um, well, let's talk about Heed and Shimmick too. Yeah. Like well, before first. we get to them, I, yeah. I kind of liken Goudreau to like a, 
a Tommy Wingles almost, right? He's he's one of those guys that's just a, a real hard worker, and he gets into those dirty areas, and he just go go goes. And uh, I, it's just nice to be able to see a guy um, who's who's worked hard to get on the NHL roster. He played a few games here and there with the Sharks. He's been with the Barracuda, and he's kind of making his way back in. Mm-hmm. I think they tried to move him from wing to center, and that there was an adjustment period for that that year yeah. that he was doing that in the AHL. It paid off. And it looks like he's, you know, he's in contention for that spot. Good on you. Um, but yeah, so switching gears to talking about Heed and Shimmick, um, the thing I wanted to bring up about them was that you can't put them down in the AHL because of the way their contracts are right now. So mm-hmm. they would have to clear waivers. I'm pretty sure someone's going to pick up a Tim Heed. I don't know if someone would pick up Shimmick, but I don't know that they want to make that uh, or take that chance, right? So. I'm not really sure what they're gonna do there because I think the way that their the roster is is um, is set up right now that they'd be able to carry two defensemen and a forward or two forwards and a defenseman. So it, having that extra fourth line guy in there in a Rourke Chartier or in a Dylan Gambrell um, that may or may not be possible depending on how many games they play throughout the season because then you know they have to go through the waivers to get pushed back down again. So they may just stick with one forward uh, up with the team and then the two defensemen because they can't push one down. And that kind of begged the idea that maybe Heat or Shimmick or somebody might be on the way out getting traded, which would be great for Tim Heed, by the way. He's ready, I think, for the NHL yeah. and a, like, you know, a, um, a third pairing role, right? Uh, I think he's ready for that, but he's just not gonna get that opportunity with the Sharks. Kind of with Chris Tierney, he, I think he was ready to be a number two center, but he's not gonna get that opportunity ever mm-hmm. with the Sharks uh, the way that we look right now. So I'd like to see um, he'd have that opportunity. I'd hate to see him go because it seems like he's kind of on the cusp. It looks like he could break in, but that's one of the things we, I, I would just say don't look for it to happen, but don't be surprised if it happens. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree okay. with that, yeah. Uh, let's move. That's it. All right. <laughs> let's move to the power play. Sure, yeah. Uh, we've been talking about this the last couple episodes, what the power play is going to look like, and we finally got a chance to see it. Yeah. Um, tonight's starting lineup against the Knights looks like it's going to be the exact same starting line that the Sharks are going to go with uh, on opening night. Mm-hmm. Um, so we saw on the top line, was it Thornton, Kutcher, Pavelski, Carlson, and Burns, mm-hmm. and then the second power play, which actually got both goals, for one of the goals was Carlson. Uh, shoot, I'm blanking on it. LeBanc, Hurdle, Kane, and Meyer. Timo Meyer. Yes. Yeah. Um, and LeBanc, we saw the highlight of it. LeBanc uh, had Beautiful. a sweet pass. Go ahead. You want to talk about it? Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so LeBanc had the puck uh, up near the blue line. And the first thing that I liked about it, again, I, I like watching the play develop, right? Um, I don't just look at, oh, Carlson got a goal, sweet. Uh, LeBanc assisted it, sweet. You know, it's it's how the play develops, right? And you've got LeBanc up at the blue line, and he's got the puck, and he's kind of getting chased, and he's got it on his backhand. And he just waits just long enough, uh, and then feathers this nice little path, uh, pass right through the defend, defender that was there, right on Carlson's ta- uh, tape. And then Carlson kind of moves the puck back to LeBanc again, and they've sucked the defense in now, right? Just that one little play that brought the defense sucked into their zone. And so Carlson's kind of on the right side boards, and LeBanc takes the puck back again, and he's up at the point, which I thought was interesting, actually, that you've got LeBanc playing the point. Yeah. Um, You know, he played a lot of time on the top unit uh, last season, but he was mostly off on that right wing side. Thornton was out. Then. That's right, yeah. but but that's where they played LeBanc. Yep. They didn't play him at the point, and it was interesting seeing LeBanc at the point and Carlson down low. Mm-hmm. Again, this is the second unit, not the first, so Burns wouldn't be out there, but I just thought that was really interesting. They had Carlson super low on the right side. Anyway, he goes to like drag and do like a, a wrister, and his, his wrister kind of goes that way instead of that way, and it's right to Carlson again. They had this nice little back and forth, um, and it just... He tipped right off of Carlson's stick and boom, yeah. right in the net. And gosh, Flurry just, he was, he had nothing. He had, didn't even know where the puck was. Yeah, he was battling with, I think it was Timo Meyer on that goal. I, yeah, I think it was Meyer. Right. Meyer was, was in front, front of the net. goal. Yeah. And Flurry's a very aggressive goalie. Uh, he likes to come out of the crease. And especially on, on plays like that from the point, he'll get him to the guy. And we saw it in the playoffs against Couture a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Couture would be standing 
right in front of the crease. Flurry would come in and hit him, yeah. flop, whatever else, because I don't know, like how Flurry plays, but uh, <laughs> so you could see him battling with Timo and he's kind of like pushing him and the pass goes through and, and Flurry never even saw it. Yeah. He didn't even react. So he goes into the butterfly because he sees that the puck moved and Carlson's over here on his, to his left and he just taps it in the, and the puck goes in and he just like turns around yeah. and he's like, ah, oh, didn't even see it. So I think... This is a whole different topic, but going <laughs> to um, Vegas, everyone's picking Vegas to still win the division. Yeah, I think we're going to see Flurry and Vegas kind of regress a little bit. Not a lot. Like mm -hmm. they're still going to make playoffs. They're still going to be a tough team. But I can see teams are now going to pick up on the fact that this is how you beat Flurry: is yeah. you you either fake the shots and you pass them out wide, his eyes. tip ins, yeah. you get into his face, you mm -hmm. kind of get him off his game. Um, granted, the Sharks lost five to two. But uh, yeah, that, I mean that can go into our next segue here of uh, the shorthanded so goals let's against see. five to two. So if you take five and you subtract two, what number do you get? Three. That's how many shorthanded goals against <laughs> <laughs> the Sharks had. Um, so we've said many times, oh, it's just preseason. It's just preseason. It's just preseason. Um, here's my problem. I don't care that it's preseason. When you get scored on three times, shorthanded. Shorthanded. <laughs> that's ridiculous. So uh, now. I will say this, this is the time for you to make those mistakes. This is the time for you to say, hey, pitch a little bit more than you normally would. This is the time for you to put different people out there than you maybe you would mm -hmm. normally put out there. Although it seemed like they had the lines that they wanted out there. Um, this is the time to try a different strategy while the people that you've got out there are out there, right? It just, I, I hear a lot of people freaking out about three <laughs> shorthanded goals against. And I agree, it's something to freak out about. It's something that needs to get fixed, but this is the time to make those mistakes so that you can fix it. I guarantee you, you're not gonna see three goals against yeah. ever again uh, with this unit. No, <laughs> this it's not gonna happen. No. It's not gonna, they, they will work on, on the fact, things that they did wrong yeah. and, and they will shore that up. It will not be an issue. I but, felt like a couple episodes yeah. ago we were talking about special teams and I thought when we were researching it up, we were sitting here looking and I go, you know, I felt like the Sharks gave up so many shorthanded goals last year. <laughs> and I looked and they gave up three in the think? season. yeah, Three the total in the season. And that was the least amount in the league. They were tied with another team, yeah. but that was the least amount given up. I was like, wow. So they gave up the same amount the entire year as in this one game. So again, two periods, it's really. preseason. Yeah. Yeah. Who cares? Who won the preseason last year? Right. Who knows? Who right. cares? Right. So uh, I'm not too worried about it. Um, again, it's it's more tape for them to yes. dissect for on themselves. Um, so they're going to look at the power play. They're going to say, okay, you guys are set up here. You know, if the break happens, this is where you should go. This is blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. So I'm not too worried about it. I mean, even Martin Jones probably wasn't playing super I don't know. Yeah. I didn't really get to watch much, so I, I can't really it's dissect it. It's kind of hard but. to blame Jones when you're getting a two-on-o yeah. breakaway shorthand. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a massive brain fart on, on the part of the San Jose Sharks. I mean, Burns just fell down, essentially. The puck, he tried to swing his stick at it. Nothing. And then... Two knights go up the ice, score yeah. right. I think it was no sick or something. And that, that's the knight's mo is the speed. Yeah, like they're just going to kill you with speed. So um, it's nothing new. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't, I'm, I'm not worried. It's preseason. <laughs> it's preseason. That's all I care about. Okay. Yeah. The Sharks um, could have gone six and zero. So no, <laughs> however many games they had, I don't care. Well, uh, that was the interesting thing with uh, Vegas that on their stream, they were saying, oh, the, the Knights have only lost one game or something in this preseason or whatever it was. So we just, uh, this next segment, we're calling the sanity check, yes. right? Yes. Again, there's a lot of people freaking out about the 5-2 to two loss today in the last preseason game, the fact that we gave up three shorthanded goals probably, against. Probably because it's against Vegas, who we lost to in the playoffs. Sure. Too. That's probably another factor. But, but we're hearing things like, <laughs> oh, Carlson's a bust. <laughs> we're hearing things like trade Burns, train, trade Pavelski, trade Braun, trade everybody. It's... It's preseason, guys. Like this so, is this is the time where they they don't play necessarily their exact game plan. This right. is the time where they're trying out a few things to see if it works well or not. Because if you do get three shorthanded goals against, it doesn't count against you, right? Yeah. So go ahead, pinch a little bit more, see if it works. Oh, look, it didn't work. It didn't work three other times or whatever total, right? right. But 
I, I think there's there just needs to be kind of like a calming point um, with the fan base. I mean, look at the other way. If the Sharks won five to two, you think they'd be yeah? You know, everyone would be like, oh, we're going to win the Stanley Cup. It's no, ours. it's it, easy. You know, like right. That it, it goes both yes, ways. Yes, yes. And and one thing I wanted to talk about was for like the season. The way I look at a Sharks season is a total macro view. Mm-hmm. I don't like to dissect yes each and every game and go, oh, they got blown out eight to two or in this case five to two. Right. Like oh, doom and gloom. Trade everyone. Mm-hmm. This is the worst. They're never going to win. They're not going to win a cup because of this. <laughs> and it's just. I look at the whole season. You go, okay. In the last ten games, how do they do? Yeah. You know, how many points do they pick up? Right. Out of a possible whatever. Guys are going to have off nights. Mm-hmm. Even superstars. That's what you. What. At, at this level, um, anyone who's in the NHL has the skill. There are elite players. Carlson. Yeah. Burns. Thornton, these guys are elite. And what makes them elite is they're consistent. So they have the skill, they consistently put up points in consistent games, even them, they're gonna have off nights. Right. They're not gonna score in every single game, mm-hmm. but you'll see their impact on the game. So the difference between a superstar and a yeah, all-star no, or a good player yeah. is consistency. That's true, it's so very true. I like to look at the games in a macro view. Yeah. I mean, you no, could be a little a, different. And that's a great point because you could be awesome for two games. You could be amazing for two games. Good. You have 80 more to play, right? right? So It's a grind. Yeah, it's, it is. It's a grind. And it's how you play over the, the, the long haul. It's not how you play in just a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. And to that point, actually, the way that we're going to continue to shoot this show, by the way, is in, in one week increments, right? right? We're going to continue doing that. We, we want to look at the week. And we're not going to dissect each individual play or each individual game. We're going to kind of go over, hey, how did they look over the course of that mm-hmm. week? That's how we're going to do this show moving forward uh, during the regular season. I just thought I'd interject right there to yeah. kind of let them know um, that that's what the plan is. We're not planning on doing a... We won't be doing recaps. Yeah. You have we, you have Brody Brazil yeah. and Curtis Brown for recaps. You have there's, there's many other sources that will recap the game for you. We want to bring a different experience for you guys. So um, with that, we'll change gears and uh, we'll jump into the next topic, which was fan etiquette. There you go. So the season is upon us. Mm -hmm. You may be new to Sharks Territory. Welcome if you are. And thank (laughs) you for joining us here at the Fin Factor. Welcome all the Ottawa fans that have jumped bad wagons over to the Sharks. And we do not mean that sarcastically. Seriously, if you're an Ottawa fan and you just want to tune in because you like Eric Carlson order, Absolutely happy to have you guys here. Um, happy aboard. to have you watching. Yeah, jump the on. boat is large, <laughs> <laughs> or the wagon. The wagon is large. Whatever. Whatever you're. So anyway, um, yeah, I think you know, just just letting people know uh, about fan etiquette going to the game. Maybe it's the first time you've gone to the arena. You're just really excited that you know, the Sharks look really good this year, mm-hmm. and you just need some tips about what to do when you go into a game. So so I think the first. thing Thing. We, you know, yeah. as soon as you get there, you know, oftentimes you're getting there before the game started. Hopefully you are, and you're able to see kind of the, the Sharks players games getting around. Home games generally start at 7.30. Okay. Some other teams do like 7, mm-hmm. like their local time. Sharks are always 7, almost always 7.30. Um, you can get there a couple hours beforehand. The doors open pretty, pretty early. Mm-hmm. Um, the Sharks, and I don't know if other teams do this or not, but you're allowed to go all the way to the front row where the Sharks are warming up, or the other team. You can go on either side. I think everybody, everybody in the NHL does yeah. that, yeah. They yeah, so you in. get to the game early. If you have kids, bring your kids down. You can go right up to the glass. You can watch them skate out, warm up. And this is like a good hour before the game yeah. starts. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times the players will be sitting around on the half boards, kind of right before it starts to curve around. And they'll hand pucks over to yeah. the little kids. So if you have a kid who wants to get a puck, yeah. sit there that, that is and look cute, and you'll get a puck. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best way to get a puck if you're looking to get a puck. Um, um, when they're practicing, they'll generally they see a little kid over there, and if the kid's got you know a Sharks jersey on, and he's got his little sign that says you know I love Pavelski or yeah, something like that. Yeah, you can bring that. signs. That's another thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, you know they'll usually flip a puck over for him or something. That they may not do it right away. Be patient because they have to practice with the right. pucks for a while. Yeah. But um, as it kind of winds down, they'll usually. Flip a puck or two over. I know Hurdle is really good about that. Yeah. He loves like getting the, the puck on a stick. He flips it up a couple times mm-hmm. and then he tosses it over the glass. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you if you have any little ones that are interested in, in watching a hockey game, uh, you want to get a puck, definitely go there. In fact, if the person standing next to you is an adult and gets the puck, uh, like say Aaron's there, he grabs the puck and I'm there with my son. 
Aaron, as a good hockey fan, should and would, this is again etiquette, yes. hand that puck over <laughs> to the little kid. It's kind of like baseball in that respect. If yes, I, if totally. I yeah. Okay. So yeah, basically get, getting a good fan experience for the kids. You know, it's it's a vulcanized piece of it's rubber. It's a kid game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Kid game played by adults <laughs> that we pay to go see. And we love. And yeah. we talk about. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all good things. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, get there early um, and, and you can potentially get a puck and you can see them warm up and do all that fun stuff. So uh, what's the next piece of well, etiquette? Next in order. Okay. Or this isn't so much etiquette. This is more of to let you know if you're going to a Sharks game uh, for your first time. Okay. I don't, this doesn't usually always translate on TV. They don't always show the national anthem on TV. Um, after the national anthem, or I'm sorry, before, before the national anthem, be, right, they'll announce the singer, they'll walk out, and right before the singer starts, <laughs> uh, I think it's 209. Hey, what started it. insert team, opposing Whatever. team uh, name they're here. They're playing Anaheim. Okay. This, this game is Anaheim. So they'll say, hey, Anaheim, and the whole section will say, you, you suck. suck. And now it's becoming like the whole arena yeah. says it. So um, <laughs> if you hear don't that, don't be scared. Yeah, <laughs> don't be scared. Um, and that's just that's just a tradition yeah. that's been been started. So two oh nine. If you ever buy tickets at yeah, the Sharks <laughs> game, you've never been to a Sharks game. Two oh nine is behind the goal where they shoot twice, and it's just off center a little bit. That is what's known as the loud or rowdy section. Um, I used to sit there for a season or two, okay. um, and I also sat in two oh eight. I've sat everywhere, but uh, I, had, I had two full seasons. I think at two oh nine. But they're good people. They're fun. Yeah. It's a lot of. They've been around for a long time. Those guys. Those are like Cow Palace Day. Nice season ticket holders. So, um, the OGs, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, that so, that's one of the things. Is right. The you suck. So uh, the other thing uh, with you we were talking about the fans in the sections. Obviously, you're in rows, and there are people behind you. Uh, one of the thing things that uh, people hate is when you are leaning forward because then it's hard for the person behind you to actually see the game. And there's um, a reason for this. There's there's kind of a, a, well, you can jump into that too, but there's kind of a fan split on this. Some people, like, they want to lean forward and the people yell at them from behind, hey, you know, sit back. And those people just don't care. They, then they'll continue to lean forward. They'll ignore and them. It's, and yeah, and, and it's... Then it you'll, you'll get the blue gets, coats over yeah. coming to tell you to lean back or to leave. So uh, it, for everyone's happiness and everything else, please just sit back in your chair, and make <laughs> it easy. And if you want to dive so in, so I'll explain more, go like ahead. the difference between arenas because this is I think this might maybe not only San Jose, but it's a San Jose thing, um, and it's also the upper level. Like the lower level, it's not so much a problem. Mm -hmm. The upper level was built very steep. Um, this is they I think they had the design before they had a hockey team, which Randy okay. talked about. Um, so it's very steep, steeper than normal. It's a little bit closer, so you can see the ice. Um, so even in, if you're in the last row up high, you're closer to the ice than you would be at other places that aren't as steep, right. so you're further away physically. So because you're, you're closer and it's steeper, if one person leans forward, their noggin goes yeah. right in front, covers the entire crease and goal. You can't see anything. And it's not just the person behind yeah. you. It's about four or five rows <laughs> behind you. You block all those people's vision. So if, you're, if you can't see the puck in the corners, don't lean forward to look over. You go left and right. Or you look at the, the jumbotron. <laughs> or you look at the jumbotron. Yeah, yeah and which is better. Realistically, nobody's scoring goals from along the boards in the corners, so you're not missing anything. Except LeBanc tonight got one. Right. Well, he got it on the goal line. Uh, so yeah, like, sure. <laughs> but it, it, it kind of like uh, hitting your brakes uh, um, on the freeway. <laughs> it's it causes a chain reaction. One person leaning forward, yes. then the person behind them, and then everybody's trying to, and you're all screaming at each other. So um, that's probably the number one thing I think people get yelled at yeah. for sharks games yeah. is leaning forward. So if you hear someone yelling at you. To lean back, don't get mad. <laughs> lean back, because if you don't, lean they're going to get angrier, and they're going to call the blue coats. Yeah. And the blue coat will hand you a little index card that says, you know, <laughs> please lean back. And there's also an announcement during the game right. in between. I think when they go to a commercial yeah, break, they yeah. say, please lean back. You struck the piece from behind you. Yep. The other thing they say in the middle of play uh, on the jumbotron, the announcement, and everything is not to get up during play. Mm -hmm. So that's another piece of fan etiquette. Um, if the play is going on and you're hungry for a pretzel, please wait till the whistle. Yes. <laughs> and just then you can get up and go, and it works both ways. Um, and the blue coats usually stop you from going down into play, but uh, generally you've got your pretzel, you're about ready to go back in. They're already playing. You don't go down the steps because just like leaning forward as you're going down the steps, you're blocking people's view. Right. Um, actually, what I've done before is they'll the blue coat let 
let me go, right? Because the play stopped and the play started up before I actually got to my seat. Yeah, I just sit sit down and on the That's aisle. A lot of people do. They'll yeah. sit and they'll stop and sit in the on stairs, the stairs. Yeah, so that you don't block anyone's view. Right. It's it's just kind of again etiquette. Just yeah. being nice to your fellow fan. So. Um, yeah, I, just, I don't know if there was... Was there one other one? There was another piece of etiquette you wanted to... Uh, the woo. The woo. Oh. You want to talk about the woo? I don't want to talk about the woo. <laughs> there, <laughs> I don't like the recently, woo. in the last couple seasons, there's been wooing woo -birds. at the game. Woo yeah. birds. Yeah. Uh, pretty sure it comes from the Ric Flair woo. <laughs> <laughs> which, um, it, it's... I won't even say it's 50-50. I think there's more people that hate it than like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. There, there's... And I first heard it... Um, during baseball games, during Giants games. Okay. Uh, and this goes back maybe a decade ago, mm -hmm. 10 years ago. And it's usually when it's a blowout, it's towards the end of the game, there's like no fans there, <laughs> and people just start wooing because you could hear it on TV. Yeah. Because there's no one there. So you hear it and you're like, oh, that's kind of funny. And you just hear it just go, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> it's just like, okay, that's really, really annoying. Uh, there's especially on Twitter, man. You when you hear the wooing and you go on Twitter, the people are just ripping into it. Like this is just stop the woo, stop yeah. the woo birds. Yeah. So I am in agreement. Stop the wooing. It's awful. I am in agreement with the with the wooing. I, I'm not a fan of of the large uh, large amounts of wooing that we hear. And it's not just like woo and then it's done. It's no, like, it's just woo, ongoing woo, 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 throughout. Yeah. Like you know, it's just okay. We get it. We get it. You're excited. Just. You're a Ric Flair fan. Let's watch, cool. watch the game. <laughs> yeah. When you're done with the game, you can go outside and woo all you want, please. Okay? <laughs> yeah. When we're inside the arena, please, <laughs> just just let's enjoy the game. No, the, and the other one. Yeah. I don't have as much of a problem with it. I know you do. Go ahead. I don't like the wave. <laughs> I, I hate the wave. I I refuse to do the wave. And I know I know Crazy George, who's a local, local guy, is the one that supposedly created the wave. Um, I don't like the wave because it's, it's on Wikipedia page. Really? It's on his wiki. That's his claim to fame. Um, I, this goes back to our etiquette of staying in your seat and okay. not standing up during the play. Like If it's during intermission, if it's during commercial break, wave all you want. I don't care. When it's during the play and you're standing up in front and throwing your hands up, it's oh, like, okay. oh, come okay. on, man. So that's why you don't like the wave. During the play. You don't like the wave during the play. Yes. Okay. It's not that you have a problem with people putting their arms no, up. No, no, no. Okay. No problem. Right. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. I, should, I should rephrase that. I thought I you don't... just thought it was old and antiquated. No, okay. no. I, right. I, think it's, I think it's fun, okay. especially kids like it because mm -hmm. they're like, ooh, it's coming. But during... They go, what? Woo. <laughs> yeah. During, anyway. During the game, it, it's really annoying when you're trying to watch and... It usually happens when there's a long um, period of play with no break. Like there's no whistle and the, the play just keeps going and, and the people are getting bored. Hmm. And so then they start the wave and it's like, oh my God, stop. Just <laughs> sit. I want to watch the game. Yeah. So that's my thought on the Okay. Wave. But only during play. Outside of play, the wave is okay. Wave all you want. Either inside of play or outside of play, wooing is never okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Woo birds, go home. Stop. Stop. <laughs> okay. Well, good to know. So uh, if you have any other questions about fan etiquette, please be sure to let us know, and we will be happy to answer that question for you. Or add them in the comments below. And, yeah. And uh, we can start a discussion in the comments. That would be great. So yeah. with that, I think the last thing we want to touch on is the hat giveaway and yes. I will ask our producer if he has the hat for us to show right now if so great if not no worries we can always put a graphic <laughs> on the screen so anyway uh, the hat I don't know if you've seen me wearing a hat maybe on uh, Twitter Instagram Facebook I'm gonna try to catch this without looking thank you so there's the hat it's <laughs> not good we're good um, yeah that's it right there um, really bright wow it's a lot brighter than the one that I've been wearing so um, <laughs> we're, we're gonna new. give this guy away <laughs> yeah we were doing the amount of subscribers before we were giving away on the shirts right 100 200 um, this is going to be a little bit different we have a link that we're going to put down here and you'll be able to essentially just fill out some information and you'll be entered in and you can click certain things to share more you'll often see. and get more points you'll get more entries based on what you do essentially yeah, yeah. Uh, but you get to to win this bad boy right here and it's it's a uh, small slash medium um it's been stretched out a little bit though i haven't worn it or anything but um it's it's a good looking hat and it's kind of one of a kind because i don't think we're going to be doing these anymore this was more just like for for me it came as a small it was an accident so i ordered a large and never put this one on so um it's one of a kind. <laughs> it's more of our like preliminary stuff, kind of like yeah. our shirts. Like, yeah, we exactly. Just ordered a few stuff just to kind of see what it looks like. Yeah. Which, speaking of, we are going to be opening a store in the next week or two. 
uh, we're going to be getting our order. So we're going to have, uh, let's see, black and white t-shirts, mm -hmm. a black, oh, and, and gray, and teal, wait, no, not white. <laughs> no, I'm not white. No, no white. Black, black teal, teal, and gray, gray yeah. shirts with the Fin Factor logo big on the center. Uh, we're also going to do a hat. I think it has a teal brim. Teal brimmed hat, black. Black. Yeah. So it'll look like this, but it'll have a teal brim. It and so it'll really be a sharp. snap back as well. This is a flex fit. The other ones will be snap yep. backs. And then uh, we are going to do a women's black shirt, a women's cut. With a, a V, whatever, Low right? Yeah. V cut. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to look great. Uh, I'm we'll unfamiliar <laughs> with women's cut. Just, okay. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll post that up. It's, it'll be on our website yeah. uh, and we'll let you guys know. So I know we've been, a lot of people have been asking us about when we're going to start selling stuff. Yeah. Ever since we got these, people have been asking us about selling merchandise. So we're, we're finally on, on that train and, yeah. um, We'll, we'll we'll have that up as soon as possible for you guys. Woo, In the meantime, woo. this is the one piece that you're able to get. We yes. do have one t-shirt, two t-shirts now out in circulation. Yeah. <laughs> um, Chase Beardsley was the winner right. of the 200 sub, which yep. that we shot up right past 700, <laughs> I think is what it was, as yeah. soon as he had that tee. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, Chase, if you're watching, please send us a picture so we can get that up for everybody else to see. That's awesome. Uh, for the eventual winner, we're going to want you to take a picture with this hat as well. Yep. Um, and I think that's really all there is to say about the promotion there. That's so it. we're that's good. That's it all. That's all it for the show. And that is it for the show. Sweet 16 in the books. Yes. Very good. Okay. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. See ya. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, Please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.